What's going on ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you're having a great day. In today's episode of the Simulator series, we are going to be learning how to format big numbers in our game to make them look good. As always, if this video does help you guys out or you did learn something new, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I created during this episode. There's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's get into it. So to quickly illustrate what I mean by formatting big numbers if we look on the screen right now we can see in our coins gy the number is 1000 so one comma zero 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 but if we go inside of our game we can see that when we have over a thousand coins like for instance right now we have 3022 the comma is actually missing so the number kind of looks a little ugly so in this episode we're going to be learning how to add the proper abbreviation or the formatting to every large number that's displayed to the player in our game the way that we're actually going to be doing this is by using a library that's already been created by a member of the community the reason that i'm choosing to use an already made library rather than making our own is because one this would be a really good lesson to teach you guys on how to get and use libraries that are already made by other people and additionally there's a saying when it comes to programming and that is don't reinvent the wheel one way to think about that saying is that yeah we could make our own way of formatting all the numbers and applying the proper abbreviations to them but this has most likely already been done a hundred times why should we invent our own way of doing it when we can already use somebody else's way of doing it now of course i wouldn't always recommend just using a library for every single task because some Sometimes the libraries could be made really low quality. Sometimes they could even be malicious or harmful to your game. But there's a good amount of times where you will use publicly released libraries to simplify the job for you and allow you to not have to put time into recreating your own system. Anyways, now, how do we actually download this module? The module in this post that you're seeing right now is, in my opinion, a very overly complex library that we really don't need to use. If we scroll down a little bit, we can see that the poster actually made a new post further down into this same thread, and he marked that as the solve post, and basically what he saying right here is this is an alternative module which basically does the same thing as the original module but it's a lot simpler and it requires a lot less work and it still provides all the features that we actually want to use and not all of the extra ones that we most likely won't be using so for you guys you guys can go down below in the description and i'll leave all the links for you guys to directly download the specific module now there's two ways to get it one he uploaded it to roblox so we could get it right here and then additionally he provides a direct download link as well which we could download the rbxm file so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and download the file if you guys want to do it through the roblox studio you guys can do that as well now the one reason that i'm doing it through the file is because maybe you guys have never added an rbxm file to your game so go back into studio and then open up in file explorer and go to wherever you download and save that specific file and we can see the file is right here so what you're going to do is just drag and drop this directly into your studio and now we can see a module script has appeared inside of our workspace and if we open it up we can see it's a full-on module script with a bunch of different comments and stuff like that we can also see it has a couple of different functions those are the ones that we're going to be using and this is the library that we just obtained so that's all good now that we have the library inside of our studio what we then want to do is we want to decide where we should actually put this library at if we think about it there's a couple of different places where we could put it we have the server script service and the server script service is only accessible by the server we also have inside of the starter player we have the starter player script which is only accessible by the player themselves and then we also have the replicated storage which both the server and the player are able to access now if you were only going to use this library on the client side, then I would recommend putting it inside of the starter player scripts. Or if you only plan to use it on the server side, then of course put it inside of the server script service. But I've commonly used this module on both the server side and the player side. So what I want to do is I actually want to put this inside of the replicated storage so both the server and the player can access it. If you're confused at all by who's able to access what, you can think about the config file or the remotes. So our remotes are inside of the replicated storage, and that means that we can use the equip tool remote on the server side and the client side. So for instance, if we fire it from the server side, then the player can also access the remote and listen for whenever it's fired or vice versa. The same with the config files. Anytime we want to use the config files, we're able to access it from both the server and the player because it's inside of the replicated storage. Now imagine if the player wanted to have access to the rewards, the stats, or the utils module scripts that we have right here. The players are not able to access this because this is inside of the server script service, which only the server is able to access and not the player. So now hopefully that helps you guys to understand where to store specific modules or libraries and things like that. So the next thing we're going to do is inside of the replicated storage, we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this libs. Now what libs stands for is it stands for libraries. In a way, it's pretty similar to the utils that we have right here that we've made ourselves. It's basically just a module script with a couple of different functions that we'll use inside of our different scripts. And since utils and libs are pretty similar, the reason that I'm making a libs folder instead of a utils folder is because I like to make a folder for all the specific libraries or module scripts, which I did not specifically create myself. And I put those inside of a libs folder so that I know this. So with that being said, let's go 
ahead and drag and drop that inside of the lips folder. And now let's actually start using this. So I'm basically just going to minimize all the different things already open inside of our Explorer. And then I'm going to go inside of the starter GUI, inside of the currency GUI, and open up the manager. Now inside of here, of course, we want to require the module that we just added. So let me open that back up again so we can remember the exact name. We already have the replicated storage right here. What we're going to do is we're going to say local format number equals require replicate storage wait for child libs wait for child format number and there we go we now required the module and now we can look inside of the change value function because this is where we change what number is being displayed in our guis so we'll always pass through the amount which is the specific number that we want to update inside of the display and now let's go ahead and type out format number period and now we can see a couple of different functions we're actually able to use realistically the ones that we're going to be most interested in is format in format standard and format compact so to understand what each of these functions actually do, let's go ahead and make a print statement and we'll print out the results from each of these different functions. So we're going to say format number dot format int and we'll actually just pass through the amount, which is the number. And then we'll copy this print statement and we'll make one right below it and we'll say format standard. And then once again, we'll copy and paste this. And then we're going to say format compact. And now we can see the different things that actually get printed out. Another thing that we should do to make this testing a little bit better is we should say amount equals 10,000 so that we know the number is always large enough to have say a comma applied to it and then we can go ahead and start our game okay so we can see there have been a couple of things printed out inside of the output let's go ahead and look at the manager script again so we can see when we use format in instead of one zero 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 we get one zero comma zero 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 the same thing happens for format standard we get ten zero comma zero 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 and then for format compact we actually get returned at 10k so we can see format compact basically adds the letter abbreviation to the number and makes it a little bit smaller so rather than 10,000 we see 10k which we know that's equivalent to the number 10,000 it's just ran out a little bit differently now let's make this number 10,000 and 500 and see how that is formatted now when we start it up we can see 10 comma 500 is displayed for both the format in and format standard but we can see for the format compact that 10k is still displayed and it doesn't display the 500 what we could do to fix this is instead of just saying amount we also have another argument that we could pass through here which is called fraction digits and what this means is that if we have 10,000 500, then we can say we want the fraction digits to be one and that'll actually display 10,000.500. So we can go ahead and test it out and we now see 10.5k. What we could then do is we could say 10,550 and we can increase the fraction digits to two and we can now see that 10.55k is displayed. And then the final thing that we could do is we could say 10,555 and we would want to increase the format compact to three if we wanted to display 10.555, if we wanted to display 10.555k. It really all depends on how precise you want to actually go. I think that most games usually only display the fraction digits of two, but I wanted to showcase that that's how you use it and you guys can decide on however you guys want to do it. I'd say that most games usually use a format compact of two. Eating Simulator actually seems to only use one though. Now that we understand how to actually use this, what we can do for our display, instead of printing these out, we're going to set the amount to format number dot format compact and we pass through the fraction digits. And then instead of setting the amount, we can delete that. And now this should actually actually work. So let's go ahead and start up our game and see what happens. So we can see the game starts up and we now see 10 out of 10 food and we see 3.0k. So let's go ahead and sell our food and we're probably gonna have to get a lot of food to actually sell. And now that we've earned enough money, we see 3.1k. So that number is being displayed as we want it to be. Perfect. Now, the last thing that I want to explain specifically about this module is the difference between format int and format standard, because at least in the output, they seem to be exactly the same. And you might not realize the difference between the two. So what format int is, int stands for integer. And what an integer is, is it is a whole number. So for example, amount equals 100. 100 is an integer. If we said 100.5, this is no longer an integer. So now let's actually pass this through and see what is printed out. So if we look inside of the manager, we can see that online, 25 which is format in the number 100 is returned if we look at 26 which is format standard we can see 100.5 is returned so format standard actually takes into account the decimal right here so whenever you use format in just remember the decimal point won't be included and it'll just be simply ignored if you want to do formatting and include the decimal point you should use something like format standard or format compact depending on what you want to do so at this point you should pretty much fully understand what each specific function does and how to use them as they're really really simple so we're just going to 
gonna go ahead and delete all of that previous code right there. The last thing that I wanna clarify is that whenever you call these functions, you need to make sure that the first value that you pass to the function is a number. If it's not a number, you're gonna have an error. So let's do an example real quick. We're gonna say amount equals quote 100, and this will now be a string. So let's see what happens when we pass a string to the function. We can see that we have an error in the output and it says value provided must be a number. So one way that we could handle this, if we know that this is always going to be a number, if we know that no matter what, we're always going to have a number inside of this string, for instance, and it's not gonna be anything besides a number, what we could do is whenever we call this function, we can just say to number and pass through the amount and that'll give us basically the number version of this string. So we can start the game up and see if that works. And when we start the game up, we can see that we don't get any issues and that works perfectly. That was one of the issues that I had. It usually occurs if you're working with like text labels and you're taking the text from the text label and you're forgetting to convert it into a number. So I felt like it was worth showing you guys that to make sure you guys knew how you could fix that possible error. Additionally, you could always just use the two number method on the amount because if whatever you're passing through two number is already a number, it's not going to throw an error. It's just going to use that number anyway. We should probably add this system to all of our GUIs, which contain numbers or display numbers to the player. So if I remember correctly, another one that has numbers inside of it would be the shop. So what we're going to do is go inside of the shop folder, go inside of the manager. And then of course, we want to get the format number library again. So I'm just going to copy it from our previous manager that we just added it to. And then I'm going to add that right above remotes. So now we have format number and that should be all good. And now the first thing that I'm thinking is the price. So we've got to look for price. Let's just go ahead and control F and look for price. So we can see that this is the price right here. Let's see when we actually display the price. Okay. So I can see right here is where we're actually displaying the price. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say format number, and then we're going to use the function format compact, and then we'll just pass through the self dot price. And we could do that for every time we display the price right there. And then additionally, we might want to do this for the stats as well. Currently, I don't think any of our stats are going over a thousand. Maybe the max food might be, but it might be good to prepare for the future. So we could do the same here. And of course we want to make sure instead of saying self dot price, we're saying self dot stat for these ones. That looks all good. Let's go ahead and test this out. See what it looks like in game. So open up the shop, click on an item and none of these are really expensive, but they look normal. So that's also good. We also want to make sure that they look normal and yeah, that all looks normal and fine. That doesn't look weird at all. What we should do is we should just quickly test this out by going into our configs and make one of the tools cost like a 10,000. Let's just actually do it for the first French fry. So the stat is going to be 1000 and the price is just going to be really high. And let's see how this turns out to look. So open up the shop and we can look at the first French fry and we can see that we get plus 1k food and the cost of it is 19m. So that looks like it works perfectly and that's great to see. And now apart from that, I don't think there's any other places that we display the number in a GUI. So I think we've pretty much handled all the cases right now. Of course, in the future, if we do find anywhere that we missed or we do have more displays which do display numbers, we easily just add the library to the script and then call the specific function that we need and then boom, it's already handled. With that being said, that's going to be it for this episode. So I hope that you guys did enjoy. As always, if you guys did, make sure you smash the like button, also hit the subscribe button and turn this post notifications on if you want to get notified when I upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I do have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode. There's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next episode.